In this video, I'm going to show you my technique to get horizontal stripes on your cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you want to learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. Real quick, if you want to skip the intro, there's chapters below and you can just get right into the video. This week I'm showing you how to do horizontal stripes on a cake, which can kind of get a little tricky sometimes because you want the stripes to be as even as possible. You want them to come to the very top of the cake and I have a technique on how I do that and I want to show you how I do it. And just a note, I always work with marshmallow fondant and I always add Tylose powder, CMC powder, gum tex. It's all the same thing. It's a powder that's going to make your fondant a little stiffer, a little easier to work with. So it's not going to be too stretchy and these uh, stripes are going to hold their shape. So I will link the Tylose powder below and you just want to make sure you sprinkle a little bit into your fondant, knead it, let it sit for about 15 minutes or so, so it can start stiffening the fondant and then you want to roll out your stripes. So let's get into the video. To start, I want to measure the tier of the cake that I'm putting all the stripes on. So I have this little sewing ruler here and it looks like it is four and three quarter inches high. So now we got to do a little bit of math. I want, what do I, how many stripes do I want? It's best to do an odd number of stripes so you have the same color on the top and the bottom. If I do five stripes, each one will be about 0.95 inches tall. I have my ruler and I have my ribbon cutter. I use this all the time. All you have to do is unscrew one end. Each of these discs, one side has a little nubbin and one side doesn't. So you can either put the nubbin facing down or up and, you know, uh, just figure out how big you want these to be. Let's do an experiment and see if that works. So I just have a piece of fondant here and I'm going to cut it. Let's cut it in half. So now I have two of the same size and take it back to the cake. One, two, three, four, five. That's perfect. So this is the size ribbons that I'm going to use. And it is just under one inch, just like I, I calculated before. It was like 0.95. So I'm gonna do alternating rose gold and white. So I want to roll out light pink and white fondant long enough to wrap around the cake and pretty thin. Now I pop this fondant in the microwave. This is marshmallow fondant. I only ever work with marshmallow fondant. I just find that it's so much easier to work with. Uh, I find that store-bought fondant is a little too soft for me, but that's just personal preference. This is Tylos powder. The, the label fell off, but I keep refilling it. In here I have Wilton Gum Tex, CMC powder, Tylos powder. It's all basically the same thing. So I just sprinkle a little bit on and knead that together. So this pink fondant already has Tylos in it. I'm just going to set this aside for about five minutes just to let the powder just start working on it and stiffening it up. And I just have some Crisco on my hands and let's knead this together, roll it in a log and then roll it out so I can cut some ribbons. All right, I'm going to start with rose gold at the bottom and at the top. So I'm doing three ribbons of the rose gold and two of the white. And you can see how thin I rolled this ribbon out. And I'm going to set this extra piece aside uh, just in case I need to cut another ribbon. I also find that if my ribbon starts to stick to the counter, it's easy to take a spatula like this and run it underneath to lift it up. Now, after I cut anything out of fondant, I like to take my fingers and slide them down. And this is just me being extra, but I always do this because when you cut stuff out of fondant, the edges get a little jagged and this just smooths the edges out. Just setting these to the front of the countertop and then I will roll out the white. All right, now I'm setting these aside, but they are, they got distorted as I was working with them. So this is a yardstick that I cut in half and I just like to run the yardstick up and down the strips 
just to keep them perfectly straight. And now I want to paint these pink strips rose gold. So I have this Rolcom Super Rose Gold. I usually get the rose gold, the gold, and the silver. I can find this and link it below. If I'm painting it gold, I'll start from a yellow base. If I'm painting it silver, I'll start from a gray base. But I do a pink base with the rose gold. So get a little bit of the powder into this container. I have some lemon extract here. Lemon extract evaporates super quick. You can also use something like Everclear, some alcohol that has, is a high proof. It evaporates really quick. Good. And then just painting all of these. And when I paint the strips, I want to make sure that I get the top and the bottom as well, because sometimes down here, you'll be able to still see some pink through. So just making sure that you cover the entire thing. Actually, I'm just going to paint two of them right now. I will show you why, because in case I need to make one of them just a little bigger to fit the entire uh, height of the cake. Once it's dry, I usually just go over again with another coat because that way it'll hide any of the brush strokes. Okay, and just letting those dry for about five minutes. I'm gonna use Crisco because Crisco is forgiving and I can move these strips into place. So I'm going to paint the entire tier. This cake is just out of the refrigerator. The icing is solid. I'm not going to mess it up. And I have videos on uh, talking about how I refrigerate cakes um, and prevent them from sweating. I will link that below. It is summertime here right now. However, I keep my house cold. The humidity is at a comfortable level, so my cakes don't sweat while I'm working on them. It's very important to control the environment that your cake is in and keep it cool to prevent any moisture from forming on it. So I'm just getting a really thin layer on here from top to bottom. All right, now when I do this, I like to start at the top and then work my way to the bottom. Just in case there's some extra space, then I can make the bottom strip a little bigger. You will see what I mean. I want to have an X-Acto knife and a wet paper towel handy so I can cut the strips as needed. I'm starting at the top and I'm making the strip even with the top of the cake, which is easy to do because I have the Crisco on the cake. If it was water or piping gel or anything else, it might be a little difficult to manipulate this into place. Can you put the Crisco on the back of the strip? Yes, you can. I just prefer to do it this way. So I'm just using my finger to make sure that the strip is touching the very top of the cake. Then where it meets in the back, just take my X-Acto knife and cut and then push the seam together. I wanna to wipe my hands off because now I have rose gold all over my hands. This strip is not perfect. What I wanna do is take a palette knife. I'm down here looking at the cake and I'm going to push it up from the bottom, push it down from the top and just make sure that this is in a perfectly straight position. So right here, it's sticking up at the top too much and I wanna press it down. And down here, it's hanging down too much and I wanna push it up. So this is all just something that you have to just look at and see. All right, that looks pretty good, starting at the back and I'm going to cut one end off of the white so I have a straight edge to start with and press, uh, push the white around the cake. So I'm holding the ribbon up in the air like this. That way I don't want to stretch it out too much. And I'm using my thumb to press it up to the other ribbon. Where it meets in the back, take my X-Acto knife, cut straight up and down, and then press the seam together, which is easy to do again, because we have the Crisco on the cake. And then I want to use my palette knife again and just make sure that this looks straight. So sometimes like right here, it's hanging down just a little bit. So I want to press it up. So 
And there we go. And then I will just keep alternating until I get to the bottom. And as you can see, I'm repeating the process. So grabbing a rose gold one and pressing it up against that white strip, cutting it. And then you see how it's sticking up a little too high against the white strip. I pushed it down. I'm using my palette knife and pushing it up. Use my thumb. This Crisco is very forgiving. So I just keep moving it into place and do the same thing for the white one, putting the seam in the back and using my palette knife. All right, so every time that I do this, inevitably at the bottom, it just, I feel like the fondant just distorts a little bit as I put it on the cake so they get thinner. <laughs> so the bottom strip is usually um, a little bigger. I set that other strip aside so I can cut it bigger if needed. And look, this doesn't go all the way down to the bottom. So I do need to cut it a little bit bigger. And I have my ruler here just to see how much space I have. And it is about one and a quarter inches the whole way around yeah so i just want to cut a pink piece a little bit bigger paint it rose gold and then stick it on the bottom all right so to test it i'm just cutting a piece this is how tall it's going to be put it up against the cake and that is the perfect size All right, now I have this on the cake. It, the cake is getting soft because I'm taking forever to film. <laughs> so I just have to get this into place. So I'm just using my finger and trying to lift up the ribbon and make it look straight. Uh, use my palette knife to press it in at the bottom, just trying to get this into place. Any rose gold that I get on the bottoms here, I can get rid of it with some lemon extract or some vodka. So it was sticking up at the bottom here and I could see it wasn't touching the cake. So what I'm doing, I'm pulling it down with my thumb. And the reason I'm able to do this again, like I said, is because I have that Crisco behind the, the strips on this tier. So I can easily move the strips into place wherever I need them since I use the Crisco. Like right here, there's a big gap here. So I need to stretch it a little bit to make it fit. So you see that gap there? I am using my thumb and just trying to ease the strip up so it touches that white part. I'm just doing it very gently in small, short strokes, uh, just trying to fill in that gap. So I'm having issues right now because this cake is soft. <laughs> As I'm filming, I just let it sit out too long. Usually if I wasn't filming, I'd have this done really fast. So there is a little bit of a gap in here that I'm trying to uh, fill in. So I'm taking my thumb, I'm pulling the white down a little bit. I don't want it to separate from this top strip, but I do want to try to get it to fill in a little bit of this void in here on the bottom. Good, and then as I did that, now I can try to pull this bottom strip up to meet the white to fill in that void. So I can't stretch the ribbons out too much, but I can just try to move them into place. <laughs> so that's what's tricky about doing these uh, horizontal stripes is that it can get distorted as you wrap them around the cake. And even though I have Tylos powder in this fondant, it's still it still is a little soft. It's still lost a little bit of its shape. I know this is a little crazy the way that this is done. However, the top is always going to meet the top of the cake. If I built it from the bottom up, just using these thin strips, it would have stopped right here. And it's just one of those issues that I always have. So the bottom strip is usually a little bit bigger, which I don't think looks that bad, especially since the strips on the top and the bottom tier are a little bigger as well. But that's my technique of how to get the horizontal stripes on your cake. So there you go. <laughs> There's my technique to get horizontal stripes on a cake. I was getting a little frustrated with this because it took me a while because I was filming, like I said in the video, and the cake got soft. So when you're doing something like this, I always work with refrigerated cakes. That way the icing is solid. I'm not gonna mess up the cake as I work on it. 
If I find that my cakes get a little too soft when I'm working with them, I'll pop them back in the refrigerator for an hour or so and then continue. So I find it easiest if you start at the top like I showed you and then work your way down. That way you know that your fondant is going to be even with the top of the cake. I've done it before where I've built the stripes from the bottom to the top and either it doesn't come all the way to the top of the cake or it hangs over the top, which isn't an issue. You could just make it look like you did that on purpose and it was part of the design. But the reason I do it this way is because it's the fondant, as you're wrapping it around the cake, it just tends to stretch just a little bit, even with some of the Tylos powder added in there, which can thin out the strips, which can just make it, make your measurements a little off. That's why I like to build from the top to the bottom. And if the bottom stripe has to be just a little bit thicker or bigger, it's okay. It's really difficult to tell unless you're like, is someone going to take a ruler and measure? And when there's other decorations on the cake, you're really not going to be able to tell the difference in that bottom stripe. So now you could just take this technique. You don't have to do the rose gold and the white stripes. I've done cakes. I'll put them over here. Uh, I've done black and white stripes before. I've done rainbow stripes on this troll's cake. Sometimes I make the stripes thinner. Like in this Beanie Babies cake, the bottom tier has thin stripes around it and it's also a shorter tier. I do have a video talking about working with different heights of tiers and I will link that below as well. And sometimes I don't build the stripes all the way up the cake. I just leave it around the bottom part like I did in, in this Jojo cake. And sometimes I don't build the stripes all on top of each other. I'll, I'll leave a little space. So in this cake, the black, that's not a stripe. That's just the, the black fondant that I covered the cake with and I just did colored stripes and I spaced them out. So there's a lot of different options that you could do with this technique. So I think that's it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I don't all, I don't get all the notifications with my comments and it really annoys me because sometimes I see comments that people leave and I wasn't able to get back to. I don't know if you leave a comment <laughs> if I don't get the notification. So I try to answer as many questions and comments as I can. So you can leave them below and you can follow me on social media and check out my website. It's listed in the description below as well. And if you want to stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.